I'll be showing eight new features in Teams. This includes the new collaborative cursors in Whiteboard, the workflow app, fun new backgrounds, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is collaborative cursors for Microsoft Whiteboard. This is great for scenarios where you want to see where everyone is on that whiteboard while you're collaborating. So I'm here in a Teams meeting, and I'm going to go to the share tray in the upper right, and I'll choose Microsoft Whiteboard. And we're going to choose Collaborate on Whiteboard so everyone can edit. Now first I'm going to turn on the collaborative cursors. If I go in the upper right to settings here, you're going to see collaborative cursors, and I'm going to turn that on. Just a note, at the end of May 2022, collaborative cursors is about 20% rolled out globally. It will be fully rolled out globally by the end of June 2022. So I've turned this on, and now I'm going to add some things to the page. Now I'll click Create here, and I'm going to add a few sticky notes to the page. We're going to have people fill these out. Now I'm going to have Alex and Ella join me as we collaborate on the page, and you'll be able to see where they're moving their cursors around as they're adding content. So now you see that Alex and Ella are on the page and they're moving things around. And you know, I'm up here, I'm gonna add some text to this sticky note, Mike's note right here. And all it looks like, Ella drew a little happy face. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, see what's going on, on the rest of the page. So it's kind of nice to be able to see exactly how people are moving around the page. And you can see their cursors and what they're doing in real time. The second new feature are updates to sizing and presenter mode. So I'm gonna to go to the upper right and hit share, and now I'm gonna choose my presenter mode. I'm gonna choose standout, and then we're gonna share the window. So I'll choose this and share. So here I am in presenter mode, and you can see the normal overlay, but there's this new size control. So I can make myself really big on the screen like this, or I can make myself really small. Now I'm really tiny, hey! I can also switch my position on the screen like this, and I can make myself a little bit bigger again, size back up. The third new feature is Teams file access directly through OneDrive. I'm here on my office homepage and I'm gonna open up the waffle here and I'm gonna go into OneDrive. Now that I'm in OneDrive, go down to more places right here and click that. This pulls up all of your teams right here. So all the files area of teams are accessible. So I'll go into product team and here are all the different files areas. I'll drill into general. And hey, there's my TPS report next gen design. So these files are mapped right from this team. There's even a link to go to channel. So if I click this, go to channel, that takes me right to this channel in Teams. And if you go to files, just to show that it maps, here are those same set of files in my next gen TPS report designs. The fourth new feature is also related to files and that is the ability to set your default download location. So I'm gonna go up here to the three dot menu and click it and choose settings. Now I'll go to files. You'll see a new option here that lets me change my default location. So instead of always having it go to your downloads folder, I can change this. So I'll click change and I'm going to find a new location. So we'll open up my C drive in a tech TPS report repository. That's the place I want my folder to be set. So all the files go there. I also have the option if I want to ask every single time where to save the downloaded files, so it'll pop up a save dialog. But in this case, I'll leave that off and I'm gonna save it to my TPS report repository. So let's close this. And it just so happens I have a TPS report right here. I will click the three dot menu and choose download. So in the lower right, you'll see it's downloading now. Now I'll open up the Windows Explorer just to show where that is. So here's Windows Explorer in this folder here. And look at that, my TPS report was automatically downloaded there. The fifth new feature is the ability to set status on your calendar items. So I'm gonna to go to my calendar here and I've got some meetings and I'm gonna right click on one and I can choose show as. So I can choose free, tentative, busy. I can also choose working elsewhere. Maybe I'm working somewhere else where I normally don't work. And so it's really easy to just right click and set the status on a meeting. If you open it up and choose edit, you'll also see show as right here so I can drop it down and change it. The sixth new feature is workflows in Teams. I'm here in Teams, and the first thing I'll do is add the Workflows app. So let's go to the three dot menu here and type Workflows. And then select this, and we'll choose Add. Now I've added the Workflow app, and it's gonna show up under Apps. So now click on Apps, and collapse this, and you'll see Workflows right here, and let's expand. This is gonna show all the different workflows that are possible in Teams. And this is really powered by Power Automate behind the scenes but it's all organized and available right here in Teams. And this is the all template, so if you wanna see every possible thing and all the different workflows, you can scroll down here 
Editor's Picks is a great one because this has some of the most popular workflows. And there's also different categories. So if you want to see all of the calendar workflows, you can click here and you can explore and find out all the different options you have. Now we're going to start out under Editor's Picks and I'm going to start with scheduling a reply. So this is a common one if you want to schedule a reply message to be sent at a later time. So maybe I want to reply to something, I'll either I'll be gone or maybe I'll be asleep. So we'll click schedule a reply and you can give it a name. So right here we'll just call it schedule reply and all you need to do is click sign in. So this will sign me into my account. Now I'm signed in and I'll click add workflow. Now this has been added and it explains right here if you want to turn this one on, go to the three dot menu, choose more options and schedule reply. So okay, we'll hit done. Now we'll go back into my team. Now I'm going to schedule a reply to this message about the big important TPS report status meeting. I'm going to go here and go up to the three dot menu and I'll go to more actions here. And this is where the workflows show up. So I'll choose schedule a reply right here. This pops up a message that has when do you want this reply to be sent. So I can set a date in the future. I'm going to have it go out on Monday. You can set a time. So I want it to go really early because people will think I'm getting up early to post this at 5 a.m. I want to notify myself when that message is posted. And then here's the message that I want to send. And then I just hit submit. Now this message is going to go out at 5 a.m. on a Monday and it'll post a reply right to this message right here. Let's go create another one. I'm going to go back into apps and we'll collapse this and expand workflows. And I'll go to editors picks again. This time I want to save a message to OneNote. OneNote's one of my favorite apps, a great place to put important Teams messages. So I'll click this. And again, you've got the default name. You can change it. I'll leave it as it is. And we're going to click sign in to sign into Teams, OneNote, and O365. And we'll choose the notebook to put it in, planning notebook, and then even the section where you want to add the messages. TPS reports and hit add workflow. And similarly, the little visual shows hit any three dot menu on a message to add this and you'll save that message to OneNote. So we'll hit done and I'll quickly show how that works. Let's go back to our team. So I have a message here down at the bottom and I'm going to go over and hover it and get the three dot menu. Click that and then choose more actions. And right here is save message to OneNote and I'm going to click this. Here's the dialogue that pops up. I can add an optional note. These are really important things and then just hit submit. Now I'm going to switch over to OneNote and just show how that message shows up. Here's that message, the message details, the little notes that I added, and a link back to Teams. So those are two quick examples of workflows. There's a bunch of other ones. The other thing is, is since this is powered by Power Automate, Power Automate's also surfaced right here in Teams, and so you can go edit and see your different workflows. So if I go to the three dot menu here, and I search for Power Automate, it pulls it up, and we'll click this. This is showing all of the workflows that I've created. This is actually Power Automate behind the scenes. You can see there's a bunch here. Some are on and some are off and I could turn these on or off really easily. It shows when I've last modified them or run them. I can even drill into one like this here. And now it's really showing the full Power Automate UI. You can show the run history. You can have details. I can edit these things. I'm not going to do that right now. But this just gives you a sense of all the different things that are available. Then we'll go back here. I can even create a brand new flow in the upper right. If I click new flow here, this is the Power Automate experience. I can say create from blank, and this lets me create one right from the beginning. I'm not going to do that today, but it's just a good showing of how this all works behind the scenes. And so if you've created some Teams workflows, this is where you can come to edit them, update them, and all these other things. The seventh new feature is that live captions are now supported in Teams for the web. I can turn them on and other people can view them in the web app. So I'm here presenting my next generation TPS report. I'll go to the three dot menu and I will choose turn on live captions. Now you can see along the bottom, it's tracking what I'm saying and it has my name right next to my phrase. So even if I say things like next generation TPS report, it translates it beautifully into captions. I will switch over to Alex and show what it has on his end. Now on Alex's side, he can also do this. He can go here and choose turn on live captions on his side. And now you can see along the bottom, that same type of captioning is happening. And live captions is supported in over 15 languages and there are always more rolling out. So this is not just something that happens in English, but it can happen in many other languages as well. And just to note, live captions in the web is currently in public preview and rolling out broadly in the near future. 
The eighth new feature is kind of a fun one. It is new backgrounds in Teams. So I'm gonna to go to the three dot menu here and choose apply background effects. There are some new backgrounds. So this one is Earth Day. Let's check it out. Ooh, that's very nice. I kind of like this one. Dessert Island, not Desert Island. Wow, look at this, it's so awesome. And there's another one, this is Pantone Design Studio. This one's pretty cool, kind of hip, matches my clothes a little bit. And there are a few other options right here. I'm just showing a few, but they added new backgrounds and they should be rolled out and give you a kind of a spruced up look when you're on a call. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.